I've heard you've seen a color grade and thought, oh, that's cool. I wonder if I can do that. Well, you aren't the only one, and I'm here today to tell you that it might be easier than you think, and then show you how you can, in fact, figure out what's going on in that inspiring grade and make your own grade inspired by that very grade. He's heavy. I'm Garrett Harding with SunlitImagery.com, where you can pick up things to make you and your edits look cooler. In all of the screenshots we just looked at a few seconds ago, you may have noticed a pattern, and you may have thought to yourself, wow, these movies seem to have a lot of orange and blue. And you'd be right. But if that's all we know, we might end up with a color grade that looks like this, and that sucks. We're going to need to go deeper. We're going to need DaVinci Resolve's white balance dropper. Well, that and the parade display and vector scopes, we might even whip out the color warper if we have the studio version of Resolve. I think. Maybe it's free. I can't remember. Those are the tools that we're going to be using, maybe a few other ones, those are the main ones. But in order to create a color grade, we must first understand the color grade. A color grade is made up of three parts, which can be further broken down into subsections of those parts. But we're going to be doing most of our work today in the big three, shadows, midtones, and highlights. Almost all images have these three regions, with the notable exception of solid colors. Even monochromatic imagery contains shadows, midtones, and highlights. If we cast a critical eye onto this shot from Interstellar and use it to figure out which regions represent those areas of the image, we'll probably end up with something like this. Now, I didn't use my eye to make this, I used Photoshop, but you can do it with your eyes too. Now, if we take that critical eye that we just used and focus it directly into an area of shadow, we'll probably notice that this is not a dark neutral gray. In fact, we'll probably notice that it has a lot of greenish hues going on in there. If we want to get really specific with this, we'll bust out some of those tools that we talked about earlier. First things first, we're going to grab that white balance dropper and mouse over this area. If you're following along at home, do not click. If you click, it'll calculate the white balance of your image using the bit that you click. Odds are good that you don't want that to happen right now. This tool displays RGB values. This RGB value tells us that we have some red and some green, but that there are no blues in this area of the image. This tells us that when we're done with our color grade, we should not be rocking with very much, if any, blue in our shadows. Let's check a few spots in our midtones. Based on our color picker, it's looking like everything is decidedly warm. Last but not least, we have McConaughey's cheekbone. I, I mean, the highlights. Looks again like very little blue in here. Alright, so now we're going to bust out our other tools to really see where we're going with this. Down here we have the vector scope. I'm going to force some blue into the image. Watch what happens to the display in here. It moves over to that little square with the B next to it. That's the blue area. The vector scope uses a little point cloud to show where your pixels are chilling out, and we can see by looking at ours that almost all of our colors are sitting in the red to yellow range with a little bit in the greens and a little bit in the cyan to blue area, mostly for their clothes in this case. If we open our color warper panel here and select qualifier from this little drop down menu, we can mouse over any pixel and see its specific color. Now that we have a couple of ways to figure out what colors are present in our shadows, midtones, and highlights, we can start learning how to get those colors into our own shot. I'll be using this shot of my dog, and the goal is to get Coda to look like she could be sitting in the room with them. Maybe later we'll even mask her out and put her in the room with them if that seems like fun. All right. So first things first, there's a tool that gets you on your way here, but I don't love it. If we click the clip we want to color, then right click the clip we want the grade to be from, we get this shot match to this clip option. If we click it, it'll get close, but the odds of it being perfect are really low. In my experience, this works best for same day, same camera, same scene type shot matching, where you just need that little extra boost. It seems to hate drastic changes, makes things look kind of gross. If we try it now, we'll get a decent match, but I want to show you guys how to do this, not how to click that button. So let's go live and start on our shadows. As we're going through this, I'm going to be referring to this clip as our working clip, and I'm going to be referring to this clip as our target clip. So what we need to do to get our working clip matching our target clip is to grab a still from our target clip. So that'll show up over here in our gallery. And then once we have our working clip open, we'll go ahead and double click on that still. 
Then we can drag this line back and forth to decide what's on the screen where. So since we're starting with shadows, we're just going to keep this area of shadow on screen. And we're going to keep a lot of our working clip on screen on this side. You can bring it all the way over and go the other way if you need to as well. We're going to make sure that this shadow down here underneath Coda matches these shadows in our target clip. I'm not going to be worried too much about what's going on out here. Because like I said earlier, we are going to be cutting her out and putting her into this clip. So if anything breaks out here, it's not that big of a deal for this one. If you're doing this and you need everything to match perfectly and you have an area that's like your hero area, the area that you really need to look good, make sure that that's where you focus. You can dial in the rest of it with power windows, right? So you grab a power window, maybe put it over here, and then you can change that individually. So we contrast that way up, right? Just as an example. But since we're just using our subject here, I'm just going to do the whole thing so that she looks right. So we're going to grab that white balance dropper and we're going to check the RGB values of these shadows. And I'm going to try to get into a darker area in here just because these shadows out here are really dark. So we have red 5, green 4, blue 0 in our shadows in our target clip. And in our working clip we have red 23, green 16, and blue 16. Those ratios are way off. So what we need to do is take a lot of the blue out of the shadows of our working image. And the way we're going to do that is by using our curves here. If you're unfamiliar with curves and how they work, the left side here represents the darker areas of our image, and the right side represents the lighter areas. So if we adjust it right now, we'll be adjusting everything together, right? But if we click on this B, we can adjust just the blue. Since we need to bring blue out of our deep shadows, we're going to make two points. And the reason we do two is because if we don't, we're going to do this. And that's not what we want. We don't want to pull blue out of the whole image. We just want to pull that blue out of the shadows for now. So make our two points, drag that down. And now, I bet you if we check with our white balance dropper, we have a very different story being told up there. Yeah, so 20 red, 15 green, and 6 blue now. So we'll even bring that down a little bit more, and we might just take it down from right there. Just like that. So, check it again, and again, we're shooting for a really low blue number here. 6, okay. So our ratios are looking better, and what we're going to do now is bring those shadows down into this kind of a region. And those are really dark shadows here. So we're going to take our shadows slider, and just go ahead and bring that down. And you can see a lot of this has a lot of the blue removed already, just from what we've been doing right here. So we'll grab that again, check our area down here of shadow. We have red, we have green, and we don't have blue. But it looks like we could use a little bit more green to balance that out. So we're going to grab the green curve, and we're going to do basically the opposite. Not quite as drastic as this, but we're going to make our two points, and we're going to drag them just up. A little bit. You don't want to make it right on top of this one, or maybe you do, but if you click on one of these dots, it'll switch you back to blue. So, what I like to do is click somewhere where those dots are not and then just drag it to where I want it to be. So, I'll put that one right there and I'll bring this one down a touch and just bring a little bit of green into those shadows, just like that. Very small amount. Now, if we check it again, it's there in a couple spots, but it's been completely... Re oh, <laughs> that's what happens when you click with the white balance dropper. Just control Z to undo that. We'll bring the greens up a little bit further. So it's looking all right in some spots, but in the areas of like true darkness in there, we have just red. But that's fine, because red is the dominant color in our target image as well. So now that I'm happy with that area of shadow down there, I'm going to switch back to image wipe down here, and then I'm going to drag this over so that we can see our midtones. So I'm going to be trying to match this redder color to this reddish color in the skin tones. So it's pretty orange, um, and I think we can get there relatively easily. And step one again is to grab that little white balance dropper, check our RGB values in these more red areas. So we've got 142, 99, and 82. Over here we have 197, one, or you, well, <laughs> 209, 147, and 112. 
Move around in there, similar ratios, a lot of red, some green, not as much blue. So we're already almost close to this. It looks like we need to skew it a little bit more heavily toward the red and then maybe even bring out just a little bit of blue, get rid of it, but it's close. So what we're gonna do is grab our red here and since these are our mid-tones, we're gonna go ahead and grab the middle of this graph now. If we bring that up, so we get a lot more red in those areas, but obviously this is gross. So we'll bring that back down and touch, and we're just going to be subtle. We're going to do it like this. Nice and easy. Bring out a little bit there. And again, we're not worried about the wood on this one, since we're just trying to match the dog to the man. That's what we're going to do. So we have a lot of red. We need to bring out some blue again. So we'll grab our blue curve, and we'll bring that down a touch. That's going to give us a much nicer ratio there. So 171 red on the cheek here, 114 green, and 71 blue. We have 168, 116, and 92. So we can even bring out a little bit more blue in those midtones there. We'll go ahead and do that. 156, 98, and 76. Then over here we have 168, 110, and 76. Uh, so I think we'll bring a little bit of those mid-tone greens up. Just the same way. Maybe a little bit darker. Yeah. Bring that up a little bit. So our oranges here are starting to look pretty similar now that we're getting those RGB values lined up. 107, 63, and 38, and then let's see if we can find a 107-ish over here. 109, 66, and 48. So we're really close. Yeah, this is good. So we're going to call that square for the mid-tones right now. Those oranges are matching pretty well. Now the highlights on this one are going to be kind of challenging because we have some blown out areas right up here. This was shot in the middle of the day with no shade, so it's pretty harsh up there. And the only highlight we have to uh, check this against is right there, that little shine. Alright, so again, we'll check those colors. We've got 221, 163, and 133. So the blue and the green on this one are a little bit closer together against the red. So if we check up here, we have a lot of red, a little bit too much green maybe, and then the blue is pretty much where we want it to be, given those other two. So for the highlights with this one, I'm not going to use the curves. I'm going to show you another way to do this using our color bars. Now if you don't see these, you probably see these wheels. Just come up here, click on the bars, there you go. So lift is shadows, gamma is midtones, and gain is going to be our highlights. And then offset is everything together. So we bring green up, everything turns green. So since we need less green in our highlights, we're going to go ahead and grab this green in the gain and just bring that down ever so slightly. Now these can get out of control fast, so be gentle with these controls. You can grab your bars and go up and down. You can grab the numbers and go side to side. Or if you want to adjust all of them at once, you can grab this wheel down here and turn it up or down. So, so I'm going to go ahead and control Z a couple of times. And then we're just going to bring some of that green out. Just, yeah, not too much. Probably just that much. Honestly, I bet you that's right. And if you want to see what I'm doing here, you can see that the yellow areas, just like with all the other pictures that I've shown you that look like this, the yellow areas are highlights, the pink areas are midtones, and the blue areas are shadows. So anywhere up here or on the nose there, or the shoulder, those are all going to be covered by this gain slider. So let's see here. Too much green still. So we'll bring more green out, and it's kind of going pink on us. We bring some blue out, and we'll bring a little bit of the red in. And this is kind of getting us off of where we were looking, but our ratios are looking a little better. Okay, so now I know everything out here looks all pink and gross, 
But I'm going to go into Fusion real quick and cut out Coda with a mask, and then we'll pop back in here and see how she looks in this scene. She looks real weird in her own scene here, but I think... Outside of some of these really bright areas, actually, let's bring the highlights down a bit. Yeah, just like that. So now, those oranges are pretty close. This one's a little dark, so maybe we'll give her a little bit of highlight back. And then add a little bit of green in the mid-tones. Yeah, like that. I'm going to make this mask. Be right back. All right, so here we are with the mask set up. Again, it's a pretty rough one. Um, but I think we'll bring this just a touch darker. The working clip can be a little bit brighter since we can tell that the light is coming from this direction. So anything over here is going to be a little brighter anyway. Um, but it's just a little too bright for me right now. I'm going to unstack these. Boom. So, a little darker, I'm just going to grab the offset and just drag that down a little bit because it covers everything at once, just like we mentioned earlier. We'll check it again. Uh, stack. A little better. Adjust that angle a little bit so it looks like she's sitting on the floor. Bring that crop up to the bottom of the movie frame. Boom, there you go. Our mid-tones are the same, or at least of similar enough color. Our highlights are close, and our shadows actually blend in perfectly. There's no mask here, it, but that looks nice. So there you have it. That's how you copy a color grade in DaVinci Resolve. Just like I mentioned at the beginning, it's just three parts. And how close you want to get on those three parts is up to you. But in this case, I think this is a good demonstration of what you can do with this. You could shoot yourself on a green screen and put yourself in just about any movie, and as long as you're not in there for too long, it's going to look fine. And now you have more control than if you just were to use that shot match to this clip option. Actually, a fun thing that you can do once you get them this close is go ahead and try that again. <laughs> okay, well, I mean... Yuck. Maybe if it was a horror movie. Um, but maybe, maybe. Bring up that offset? No. Gross. Okay, yeah. I don't love that tool. I really would rather do it myself 9 times out of 10. Now, if you are trying to, say, fool people with this, you're going to need to make sure that your camera angle is on, that your focal length is at least close, and that your lighting is very similar to the lighting in the scene. All of those things are going to make this look even better, and if you want to see how to do a mask like this to get yourself into a scene, go ahead and watch this video right here, because in that one, I show you the skills that you'll need to do exactly that. So, I'll see you over there, and until next time, I'm Garrett Harding with sunlitimagery.com.